This is Taiwan Insider, a weekly news roundup brought to you by Radio Taiwan International. Every week we bring you an inside look at the biggest and most interesting stories coming out of Taiwan. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan, and here's your week in a minute. President Tsai returns from the Pacific. After Tsai spoke at Nauru's parliament on Monday, lawmakers there voted unanimously to reaffirm their recognition of Taiwan's, quote, independent sovereignty. Kaohsiung Mayor Han Guoyu faces controversy over his meetings with Chinese officials. On a recent trip, Han met with Beijing's liaison offices in Hong Kong and Macau and the head of China's Taiwan Affairs Office. Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council Minister Chen Mingtong has called the meetings, quote, extremely inappropriate. Taiwan is the happiest place in East Asia. That's according to the 2019 World Happiness Report, out March 20th. In the overall global rankings, Taiwan came in 25th place. U.S. naval vessels passed through the Taiwan Strait on Sunday. This was the third time U.S. ships have passed through this year. A U.S. statement said the ship's transit shows its commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific region. And lawmakers have passed an amendment stiffening penalties for drunk drivers. First-time offenders will now face higher fines. Lawmakers have also proposed installing ignition locks in the cars of drunk drivers. And that's your Week in a Minute. Every week, at the top of the show, we each come up with a word that describes what we're thinking about that week. All right, Andrew, try to guess my word. Okay, I see a C. CPR. <laughs> Crying. <laughs> Crying. Crisis. That's right. Crisis. <laughs> you can spell. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can spell. Very good, Andrew. Well, I'm thinking that President Tsai is facing both a domestic and a possible international crisis. Domestically, well, actually, it's a more personal crisis. She has a very popular um, politician challenging her nomination for the DPP, William mm -hmm. Lai. William Lai, So yep. she's coming home to that. Um, and then in the South Pacific, and this is something we'll be talking about today, um, Solomon Islands, our biggest ally, will have elections. And some of those candidates have hinted at switching ties to Beijing. Mm -hmm. So if she lost more allies during her term, that would also be a major crisis. All righty. I also have a word this week. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Let's see here. P. Pa. Pow. Pow. <laughs> no. Oh, you're close. Pacific? Yes, ah. ma'am. Pacific. Now, why did I choose Pacific? I think the obvious answer is because uh, President Tsai is just wrapping up her uh, trip to the South Pacific to shore up ties with allies there. But actually, Pacific has another meaning, and that is peacemaking, right? Right. And so we've seen recently uh, calls from opposition politicians, uh, in particular oh, presidential right. candidates, uh, who are interested in perhaps uh, signing a peace agreement with China, which is seen as very controversial. Uh, people from the ruling party are worried that doing so could compromise Taiwan. So Pacific, in terms of Pacific Ocean, Pacific very Allies, clever, but also Andrew. peace agreement. I try. <laughs> <laughs> So those are our two words of the week. All right. And now for our top story. President Tsai just wrapped up a visit to three of Taiwan's six Pacific allies. Nauru, Palau, and the Marshall Islands, and a stopover in Hawaii. She did not visit Taiwan's most influential ally in the area, the Solomon Islands, as it is due to have its national election next week. Now, some politicians have hinted at the possibility of uh, recognizing China instead of Taiwan. Now, if that happened, uh, there could be a domino effect in the region, and that means that Taiwan could lose some of its South Pacific allies. Now, uh, Taiwan has already lost five allies in the last two and a half years, so it is a concern because we're down to just 17 allies here in Taiwan. And we'll be talking more about that potential crisis in the South Pacific with Institute of International Relations Research Fellow Yan Zhen Sun in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about Taiwan and China's historical battle for diplomatic allies. That's our topic for Taiwan Explained. In today's Taiwan Explained, I'm going to tell you about Taiwan's diplomatic allies and the battle for them between Taiwan whose official name is the Republic of China, or ROC, and China, whose official name is the People's Republic of China, or PRC. 
Do you think you can do that in a minute? I will try. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've got a minute here on my clock. All righty. Ready? Yes. Go. All right. Ever since the Chinese Civil War ended in 1949, countries around the world have had to recognize either China, the PRC, or Taiwan, the ROC, as the representative of China. The countries in blue recognize Taiwan and those in red recognize China. Now, in 1949, most of the world recognized Taiwan or the ROC. In 1971, the United Nations switched recognition to the PRC and Taiwan lost its UN seat. UN seat. Now, look here in 2018, we only have 17 diplomatic allies, four in Central America, four in the Caribbean, and Paraguay in South America, the Vatican in Europe, Eswatini in Africa, and six in the South Pacific. Now, Taiwan has been a de facto independent state since 1949. So why does it need diplomatic allies? Well, to support Taiwan's sovereignty and part support its participation in international affairs and for its <laughs> national morale. <Ding. laughs> I think I made it. I think you squeezed <laughs> in just under the buzzer. Yes, well done. All right. It's a tough topic to do in one minute. Yes, yeah. so that's today's Taiwan Explained. Up next on Taiwan Insider, we're going to talk about a potential diplomatic crisis in the South Pacific. Now, four of Taiwan's six allies there have elections this year. The Solomon Islands has one next week, and some of their candidates have hinted they might switch allegiance to Beijing. Now, the Solomon Islands is Taiwan's largest and most influential ally in the region. President Tsai has visited the Solomon Islands before. That was back in 2017. Let's take a look at a picture from that visit. Now, this was, as I mentioned, back in 2017. She didn't visit the country during her latest trip, though, because of the upcoming elections there. Now, if the new government switches ties from Taiwan to China, that could trigger a domino effect in the region. I asked Institute of International Relations Research Fellow Yan Zhensun about this potential diplomatic crisis in the South Pacific. Let's hear what he has to say. Now, Professor Yen, what do you think about this possibility? How likely do you think that the Solomon Islands could switch their allegiance to Beijing? Okay, first of all, so, uh, Solomon Island has a parliamentary system. And parliamentary system, sometimes you will find, like Canada and Great Britain, the ship is very obvious. So in the past, usually they have about 50% of turn turnover sometimes. Uh, so you have former government official running this time and who have, you know, after they got out of office, they have ties with China, business ties. Mm. So now they are coming back running. So it is a possibility that these people who return to power uh, would like to see, you know, their connection with China uh, will get more assistance from, main, from Beijing to help Solomon. And don't forget, Solomon is the biggest diplomatic ally we have in the Pacific. In terms of population, the others all together, probably less than half of the close to 60, 600,000 people in Solomon Island. So Solomon Island does have, you know, the kind of, we call economy of, you know, scale f compared to other uh, Pacific country to receive China's foreign aid and work on the infrastructure. And also the young people feel that that will mm -hmm. help the country a lot. Um, yes, two thirds of their exports go yeah. to China. So, yeah. you think the likelihood is pretty high of them switching ties? I don't think so. I I interview uh, really? the uh, ambassador of Solomon Island to the United Nations last August. I think they still appreciate Taiwan because our assistance, whether it's a medical team, whether it's uh, our agricultural, and our Taiwan scholarship, really help the country. But a lot of times, this are uh, you know diplomats who understand the uh, positive side of Taiwan uh, for re maintaining relation with Taiwan, but the politician, you never know. So if the politician consult the diplomats, I think we are okay. But if the politician are in the pockets of Beijing, then we will have problem. Mm -hmm. So you had mentioned you're afraid of Central American allies yeah. mm -hmm. and also SRT. Like Honduras, I really? still worry about Honduras. I still worry about uh, uh, Guatemala, uh, 
and Nicaragua Why especially. Why do you worry about these countries? Well, Honduras definitely having you know uneven relation with Taiwan all the time. Sometimes they have delayed appointment of ambassador to Taiwan, and then of course you have a uh, uh, country like Nicaragua with the president there, uh, Daniel Ortega, who who is a leftist originally from the Sandinista, identified with the you know socialist ideology so easily. You know, he is also not very predictable and can change relation any time. So if Taiwan lost a few more allies, mm -hmm. um, what would that do to Taiwan? I, I, I think that right now, mainland China is not interested in trying, you know, to grab Taiwan's diplomatic ally. The reason is very simple. In the past, uh, before 2018's uh, midterm election, uh, Beijing doesn't believe KMT will come back to power. But now, with the possibility of KMT come back to power, mm -hmm. and if you grab all the diplomatic ally, actually, especially during, before, yeah. in between now and the presidential election, election that's not going to, to help the KMT for election. If mm. Beijing prefer KMT, right? That's only going to make Taiwan people very upset with Beijing, and then we'll continue probably to support the DPP. So mm. the Beijing probably will play a low profile really? now. Again, that was Institute of International Relations Research Fellow Yan Zhenshen. We go on now to a topic called Taiwan by Number. Now, in today's Taiwan by Number, we're going to be talking about Taiwan's biggest trade partner, that's China. But in just a moment, we're going to be telling you a little bit about why lemon exports from Taiwan have increased dramatically to China in recent years. Uh, before we do that, now, Lee, I have a number for you to guess. All right. Are you ready I get to, to guess? guess this time, yes. <laughs> so, my question for you is of all of Taiwan's exports, what percentage? of those exports go to China and Hong Kong. China and Hong Kong. Um, I think it's something around 40. Something around 40? 40%? You sure I about that? 40, I mean, I remember something like that. That's a lot. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be a lot. That's why we're choosing the line on China, right? <laughs> okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to play a report that we did, again, about why lemon exports to China have increased dramatically in recent years, and we'll tell you the answer to that number in just a moment. Let's have a look. In 2017, Pingdong County lemon growers only exported 4,400 tons of lemons to China. This year, though, demand for these Taiwanese lemons in China has surged. 6,500 tons of Pingdong lemons are heading across the Taiwan Strait. China's appetite for lemons took off in 2016 when a local fried chicken restaurant chain started promoting the pairing of fried chicken with fresh lemon juice. Chinese food companies are also purchasing 1,800 tons of bottled lemon juice each year. Pingdong lemons are known for their excellent taste. The county's orchards grow 70% of Taiwan's lemons. With Chinese demand high, Pingdong's farmers are sure to be busy for some time to come. So it's interesting. The reason for the increase in the lemon exports to China has something to do with fried chicken. I know. You never would have guessed, right? Just right. One trending food can make another food trend. Absolutely. And an increase of 50%, more than 50% in good lemon for our exports. Lemon farmers. Absolutely. So the answer to the question I asked All you before. Right. Uh, I asked you, what percentage of all of Taiwan's exports go to China and Hong Kong? And the answer is, have a look at it, 41%. Ah, I was close. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little angry that Pretty you were so tough. close. <laughs> I was hoping to change your I, number. I've done research on this before. Yeah. So you written, knew the answer. I've stories about this before. Okay, so yeah. next time I have Something to give you... around 40, I know. Okay. Well, what's interesting is that uh, even though we've seen cooling ties between Taiwan and China since uh, 2016, uh, since uh, President Tsai came to office here in Taiwan, we've still seen an increase in exports to China. And in fact, in 2018, just last year alone, we saw an increase of 8.74%. Really? So wow. uh, you can say her presidency hasn't been bad for trade uh, with China. Now, just for fun, I want to show you something else. Uh, we're going to take a look at the top five export destinations for products 
from Taiwan. Have a look at that list there. So as you can see, China and Hong Kong are at the very top of the list, 41%, followed by the United States, 12%, Japan at 7%, and then Singapore and South Korea at just 5%. So Nally, what that says to me is that China very important to us. is a very important trade partner. And in fact, so important that the amount of exports that are sent to China it's way more than all of the, the, the following uh, four countries combined. Right. So relations with China is very crucial for, for Taiwan ties. Absolutely. Economically and obviously politically as well. Absolutely. And that's today's Taiwan by Number. Now on Hashtag Taiwan, we take a look at what's trending on social media. We look at today three pictures that went viral. They are pictures of people who look a lot like famous politicians, and they were all taken at the same restaurant. That's right. Now, these photos were originally posted on a Facebook group called Baofei Commune, and the person who posted them said they were all taken at a shrimping restaurant. So in Taiwan, we have these restaurants where you can catch your own shrimp and barbecue them. Uh, let's have a look and see if you can guess who these politicians are. That's the first one there. <laughs> it does look like President Tsai. That's right, Nine President one. Tsai. Although usually you don't see President Tsai wearing a white t-shirt and uh, drinking Taiwan beer, <laughs> but you never know in her off hours, it's possible. Um, let's have a look at the second one. Oh, well, that's, that's a picture of President Tsai there. Yeah, the real really President Tsai. Like her hair, her hair looks so similar. Okay, and the next one, who's that? <laughs> That's right. It looks like uh, the uh, popular mayor from Kaohsiung who's uh, creating a lot of uh, a stir in recent days. That's the real man himself there. I think of the three, maybe Han Guoyu is the one hey, you might see in really a, look alike. a shrimping restaurant, right. right? Okay, let's have a look at the third one. Who's this? Kawanza. Yes. The mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very funny because it looks really? like he's looks thinking. Like he's He's staring into space, actually. <laughs> That's right. And there you can see the real Koenja. We found a picture, a side oh, view of them. Wow. I mean, they really look alike. They do look a lot alike, the don't they? The same place. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Uh, it, it's hard to imagine <laughs> the three of them uh, being at the same restaurant. Now, some of the reactions on the internet, uh, somebody said that they thought the likeness was 87%. Would you agree with that, 87%? Yes, very. Another person wondered if perhaps the three were getting together to discuss the 2020 elections. Uh, also I a possibility. I doubt it. No. <laughs> Impossible. And someone else guessed that perhaps the three of them are friends after they get off work. Hard to say about that. Probably not likely, but a nice yeah, thought. That's right. And that's this week's Hashtag Taiwan. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and all relevant social media. And up next... A parting shot for you. We have some footage of the beautiful Tanzu National Forest Recreation Area. Let's take a look. Wow, look at that. Yes, the forest has been closed since Typhoon Morakot 10 years ago and it opens to the public on March 31st. It's located in Kaohsiung City, Taoyuan District. It suffered a lot of damage from the typhoon and they've been working to restore it. Now we can enjoy it. Look at that. Look at those trees. It's, it's really beautiful. beautiful. They have a lot of uh, cherry blossoms there and beautiful hiking paths. The mountains are up to 1,800 meters high. It's a great place for bird watching too, as you can see there. And maybe it's a good place to go over the children's holiday, the, uh, what is it, Children's Day next weekend. Uh, and speaking of Children's Day, be sure to join us uh, next week for a Children's Day special. Uh, you can always do that if you go out to uh, this forest recreation area. Remember to watch us on the internet when you come back home. Yes, and thank you for tuning in today to Taiwan Insider. And do leave a comment below and send us your feedback on uh, rti at rti.org.tw. Check us out on english.rti.org.tw. And of course, do remember to find us on all relevant social media. Thank you so much for joining us for Taiwan Insider. I'm Andrew Ryan. I'm Natalie So. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>